Hello everybody. What we have here is a 1995 Johnson 30 horsepower outboard. As you can see, it is a manual or a rope start engine and I need to add electric start to this. Now originally this was a tiller steered engine. The tiller handle was removed when I got it and then I did, well, started to do the modifications to change it over to a remote steering. So this video is really going to be more of a how to convert it from a tiller steer rope start to a remote controlled electric start. Now this is a power pack and coil setup I picked up for this. The, as this was a military motor, it, it's a little different. So rather than trying to deal with that and replace its special unique parts, I'm just going to go ahead and change the military over to a kind of a civilian version, if you will. It's not really civilian, it's just a, not a commercial version, because that's all the military ones are really, is a commercial engine. So the biggest difference in the power pack is it has these guys coming off of it. This is for a remote stop switch somewhere inside of the boat. Um, yeah, I probably could adapt it over to use the uh, stuff we're going to be installing. The thing is, the wires are already kind of fraying off the back here. So whatever life this power pack has in it is pretty much gone for. The other problem with it, it uses these old early 80s, late 70s coils. They don't clip onto the top like they would usually. It's a little coil wire is inside of the coil pack so I think they do that just to prevent corrosion or anything going on in the terminals and because of that it's not quite the way it should be for this air of a motor so I'm going to replace both coils and the power pack and anything else I find along the way. We're also going to be talking about the primer choke setup that was right here which is now gone so you're not going to see that but you will see the conversion of the little carburetor here and then we'll touch on where the uh, bypass fuel lines are going to wind up going. And now let's talk about the parts we're going to need for this. Okay, in no particular order, we're going to need a electric start flywheel. Under the flywheel, we have a battery charging stator. With the stator, we also need the installation hardware. Along with the uh, installation hardware and stator, we're going to need a voltage regulator, a terminal block with hardware, apparently I only have one screw for that, terminal block cover, which is kind of optional, just kind of a beauty piece, a primer solenoid, which is right there, hardware for the rectifier, a little stop little bracket, which is there, a wiring harness, which is here, a cable clamp, there, a shift handle, hardware for the shift handle, throttle cable clamp, shift cable clamp, new float bowl drain plug, or a little screw, as well as a new gasket. An electric starter, solenoid and bracket, along with associated hardware. And one random screw that I think goes to the terminal block. And that's, that's a good start. That'll get us going. And as if I didn't have enough money into this already, we are also going to need a new starter because the one currently installed in this bracket is not any good. Here's a new in-box Avenard starter. Oh, that's uh, most of it. Still going to need battery cables, a couple of clamps, a couple of zip ties, a couple of fuel lines fuel fittings, and miscellaneous little but expensive items. For tools, needing the uh, Evanard puller, and this is a coil alignment ring. All right, before we go too far along, let's change the starter out. <laughs> See, the problem with this one is the, uh, the top it kind of just goes up. Let's see, watch. So that goes up and engages. Starter spins, but the gear just kind of stays put. I think it's supposed to be one, and it no longer. So what Evanier did here is pretty smart. They have the starter bolt up here that goes in right there, holding the entire assembly together until you come along and you're ready to put it in. Not a bad idea.
Okay, clean up the uh, terminal here a bit. And that's what it's look like from the top. Not too shabby. The only thing I don't like is my desk kind of scratched the label up so I don't have a nice new shiny clean label on it. But what are you going to do? We also lose the uh, 34 degrees before top center sticker off the side. So, yeah, that sucks. So here we have the manual slash rewind pull starter and the cable that comes off of here and goes down into this area. And what this is is a neutral start safety switch. So if you have the engine in forward or reverse gear, this little plunger pops up or down, allowing you not to be able to spin over the starter. So it needs to be neutral in order for it to start. Now, if you're doing this mod, you can still leave on the rewind, rewind starter. That The benefit of that is basically if the battery dies, you still have the rewind starter installed and you can still start and stop the motor. Um, if you remove it, the problem is you need new cowling because your hood no longer has the hole for the rewind starter. So... I think a lot of people should consider just leaving the rewind starter intact. I'm not, but you may want to. All right, let's get some bolts off. Maybe we can come in here with a one inch wrench, which I don't have, but a one and an eighth works. And we can pull off the uh, old mounts for the starter. Again, if you're leaving the rope start on, don't pull these off. Alright, let's pull off the flywheel. I'm using an impact socket for this, or an impact wrench rather, with a one and one sixteenth socket. That's good, right? Puller. All right, puller is on. Put in our center bolt, and we're gonna use the impact wrench to get this off easily. <coughs> now we have a look at our ignition components here. I wouldn't say they're nice, but I think they're fine. They, they look like they've got some rust on them. There's an issue where you think I'll get changed, but I don't think there will be. These uh, components are pretty viable. Alright, this bracket has got to go. Now, we're going to install the stator first. So stator will clip under these wires, so the first thing you want to do while your plate is still attached and held for you is break these screws loose. It may not be easy. This one, for whatever reason, is pretty easy. But don't expect to get lucky on these. They, they've probably been in, in there their whole lives. Getting them out probably is not going to be that, that easy. Maybe you can get away with just pulling one screw up and getting the other one pretty loose. But that's not going to work. Well, let's pull them both out. I have a 516 socket that I took a grinder to to make the walls a little narrower. That's going to make it easier to get inside of there to get those little bolts out. You don't got to pull them all the way out. It's all got to be loosened. plate. But we have the wires coming back through the bracket down and around up and over here. So we're going to disconnect the cable back there. That should give us some room. Maybe not. I'll loosen these up too.
Now we can get our little stator plate assembly off, flip it upside down, and we need to get to this back screw here. Okay, now let's make way with our stator assembly. See these wires are no longer clamped in so they can move around freely. This was a used stator, so I'm kind of matching up how the wires were originally run. Kind of looks like these wires were pushed up against the side where these were then installed. And of course we'll make these wires prettier once they're all in there, but from right now we just got to get the wires in there. Alright, put the stator back where it's supposed to, or the plate back where it's supposed to go to hold it for me. And that looks pretty normal right there. I have a brown wire overlapping the tan wire. Which we don't necessarily want to do, but it's not really an issue if we do. We want to kind of keep them together. So, just kind of move that over and lay them flat. Install the screws. And for the most part, I think we're okay right there. I'll get the clamp, put that back on now. And it feels like it's going to lay perfectly. Assuming I don't drop anything. Well, let's get it back off, get it backed upside down. We'll run our wires about where they should go, or at least where we think they should go. Probably not that critical. We want to reinstall our plate. I'm having a little problem with the brown wires trying to fold over on themselves again. So I'm just kind of pushing them back down. Do it from another angle where the wires will naturally want to lay themselves flat. Right there. Perfect. All right, now, as I mentioned earlier, I need to change out the coils and the power pack. I'm going to do that now, and we'll reconvene in a few minutes. So I was just going to gloss over this step, but somebody might need to do this too. So I have a new plug body there, and I'll put it in just for now. The plugs are different on the old plug versus the new one, because the new one has a little grounding wire built into it. The old one didn't, don't know why. So, in case you're wondering, this is a little pin removal tool. Alright, the old four-way is out. Now I need the pin insertion tool, which is right here. 
and you can kind of make out the wire colors on the back of this plug. So brown with yellow stripe is this side. So we find our brown with yellow stripe, which is right there, which is going in right here. get this uh, plate back together there's this plastic ring here it's kind of springs out you don't just want to put the plate on what you're kind of want to do is kind of hold it together for you and then kind of lower this down on top of it kind of like so you can usually just hold it in for you Sometimes you're going to need to do this, but it looks like this one's kind of being an extra springy on me. So as you noticed, or may have noticed, I routed the stator wires under this bracket and pulled this one back out a little bit. Now I'm going to reattach this plate here. Luckily, there's only one way they really go back together. So if you don't have it lined up right, you'll find out about it real quick when the screws don't all go back in. Plate is attached. I just like checking for smooth operation. It looks fine. The uh, Throttle cam roller looks okay too. It's got some play here. It looks like this screw came loose. So I'm just going to tighten it down a bit. I might have to adjust it later, but when I rotate it, right when it touches, it was right between these two marks. So I think we're fine there. All right, now let's talk about getting the uh, stator back into its spot. And by spot, I mean correct alignment. That is where our alignment ring is going to come in handy as it just goes down over all of the components. At least it should. A little tight. That's okay. So that goes down over the components. Everything is where it should go. At least it pushes it there. It is a little tight, which is kind of normal for it. Just tighten these screws down good and snug. If you want to go tight enough to break them, just hold them on there. If you don't want to buy this ring, I don't blame you. I'll show you how you can do it without it. So see these little bosses on the uh, stator plate here? If they're all flush or in just a hair, you're, you're good. The plate or the little ring just kind of probably makes it easier. If you're doing these all day long, you don't want to sit here and use your fingers to play with it. So that's why I think they make the ring. But you really don't need it. You just got to make sure that they're flush up against some of these bosses. But like even this one isn't quite flush. It's in just a little bit. And this side, it's pretty flush, as is that. So get these flush, and it'll be fine. Well, no time like the present to put the stator on. Excuse me, I kick the camera here. So... This is still loose. I can tighten it down, but I don't know if I want to just yet. I want to make sure that we have the full range here, which it kind of looks like we do. I'll just tighten it down. All right, now let's get the stator on. Stator has a little hole and a big hole which conveniently lines right up with our mounting bracket. Let's go ahead and put in our big screw. Followed by our little screw.
you're curious, that was a 7 16 and this was a 5 16 Now let's go ahead and put in our terminal block. So if you're wondering what this does, it takes the unregulated voltage out of our stator, which is just random sparks flying everywhere, puts them into the rectifier here, or the voltage rectifier or voltage regulator, and takes these three random power signals, currents, whatever, and changes them into a constant 12 volts out of the red wire. So that's that's really kind of important, you know, red wire. All right, let's hook up our leads here. Gonna wash off, at least wipe down the wires. Not that it really helped. All right, so we have a yellow with blue stripe, yellow with gray stripe, and that one's probably just a solid yellow. So here on our rectifier, we have a yellow with blue stripe. Excuse me, coming off our stator, we have a yellow with blue stripe. Those are going to go together. I have a better screwdriver for this. I'll get it in a second. All right, there's the yellow with blue connected. We're gonna find our yellow with gray, which is this one. Goes to this wire. Yep, that one right there. And this should be the solid yellow. Just double check it. I'm sure, it looks like it. Solid yellow is on the end. I'm just going to leave them hanging out there for right now. But that is basically how to hook up the uh, stator. Should these have been tightened? and the engine was back together and running, we would have 12 volts out of here. So I'm gonna put some grease on here because if these things ever stick, good luck getting them back off that burning stud. So that'll just ensure that it comes back off should it ever need to. All right, slide on our starter, getting our cable ground clamp out of the way. Slide the stud on first. Grease made that work pretty well. And see with the this out of the way, we can get to this bolt here. I may need to do some jiggling to make sure this all aligns correctly. Make sure we don't have two different types of hardware. Doesn't look like it. Make sure the wrench is going the right way. All right, both side ones are tightened down. So now I'm gonna put the nut onto the stud in the front. Now let's go ahead and reattach our solenoid little bracket here. This is, this is not fun. This is going to take forever. Alright, I'm going to install the throttle arm now when I find my tube of grease. I just had my hand. Alright, what I figured, a little bit of grease here never really hurt anything, so I'll put some more grease on there. We'll apply our little plastic bushing. Now, you don't need to change this because it's 
Same for a manual or electric start. But you, obviously you need to take it off to remove it. So you might as well re-grease it. Alright, that is going in there. I'm going to zoom out a bit for you in a second. Okay, throttle arm is just kind of laying there now. Which is going to fine. Gonna install the bracket first for the screws. Gonna dip them in some gasket sealing compound just to make sure they don't stick on me ever. It's pretty common. You're pulling these screws out of this cover here for them to break. So using some of this stuff's usually a good idea. Fumble around for a little while, getting in there, and get the screw started. All right, screws are in, arm is kind of supported where it needs to go. I'm going to install the grommet while I still can. Reason being I say that is because right now I can still move around this rod to kind of help manipulate the rubber into getting it back in there. Once the rod is secure, you can't really do that anymore. You could have put this on before the rod, of course, but then you gotta get the rod in all kinds of weird angles. Either way, it's not easy, but it's in now. I don't know how that fell off, but whatever. Alright, so grommet is on. Get the little clip up in the position, as well as the top. Same time. This little rod, gotta go through this little piece of plastic. I'll flip this back over and put it back together. And that'll hold the rod in place, kinda. Alright, realize I wasn't recording. <laughs> go me, right? So I reinstalled the throttle arm slash timing plate little arm back together. I put the spring back on while pushing the little plastic thing through the rod and we're pretty much good to go. I need to install the screw into the bottom throttle arm support and we will be styling here in a second. Alright, here's where I messed up. I didn't tighten down this top uh, support bolt before putting everything else on. My mistake on that one. Let's get this arm loose again. Get it out of the way and hopefully it will give me enough room to get a wrench in there to tighten down that, that little screw. All right, well, we're here. Might as well install our throttle stop, which is this bolt and this bolt. Yeah, I don't know if I want to. Yeah, that doesn't feel good, fellas. And that's uh, that's where it needs to go. See, that one comes right out, the other one not so much, you I mean? 
It didn't break. Show me. Alright, I'm going to clean that hole out with my uh, quarter 20 thread chaser. And yeah, not much going on in there. Pretty clean. Coat the screws in the gasket sealing compound. All right, let's uh, start installing our wiring harness now. So what this is gonna do is kinda come down, clip in around there somewhere. Or tan wires. Luckily, there's only one way they can go. Off our power pack, plugs in right there. And then our timer, or our temperature little cinder unit, plugs in right here. Alright, those are done. Sure, there is a better way to mount this, so I'll worry about that later. So our yellow thread stripe goes on to this terminal on the solenoid. Put a little washer on, little by little nut, and then the black with the see there's a quarter inch and then that little one, little one goes on the other side. So, and then our red we go on to the base of our star solenoid. Remaining wire is going to go through the little starter hole down below the carburetor and come out the other side. Just like so. And just kind of wrap it around, make it all look good. Yeah, that works for now. Now we have a black little socket terminal. It's going to go into the back of this plug. We need the installer tool. Going to find a nice, good, solid ground to push this thing in there. There's, it seems like there's a little hump inside little connector. It's hard to get past that hump, but once you do, you're, you're home free. And that is the stop circuit. So this power pack, I'm not quite happy with the way it's sitting. Tighten down our solenoid wires. All right, well, we're here. We're going to do the ground strap. Um, no no uh, ceiling compound on this. You want the best connection you can possibly get. So this is the ground strap coming off of the lower motor cover, and this is the ground wire for our uh, harness. I don't think it matters which one you install first, so just go about your merry way. Now this came on the um, starter bracket. The original bracket didn't have one because it didn't have a need to have a battery ground, so there wasn't one on there. But we need to add one. Yeah, that's good. 
Now, our battery is going to connect here, or our negative battery cable is going to connect here eventually. But for right now, I'm just going to go ahead and put, a, uh, put the nut back on it. Make sure I don't lose it. And something feels off with this nut. Yeah, it looks like a fine thread, and this looks like a coarse thread. So that nut wasn't supposed to go there. So I'll get it to replace that. All right, working our way around to the front of the carb here. The primer solenoid is no longer going to be on this motor, so we don't need this lower carb little barb there to feed it. So I'm going to pop that off. And the gasket came with it. So when I rebuilt the carburetor, I didn't change that out. So I still have that spare gasket. So I'm going to pop the gasket off the drain plug here. And I will pop on the new one. And put in our new little drain screw. Give it a little snug. And that is done. Alright, here we are on the other side of the motor. Might as well connect our wiring. So, let's get the red one off first. Let's use the red wire. Connect it to the red wire. And then reinstall our terminal block here. That will send power back through the harness into the battery cable. Now our gray one here is our tack signal. So you want to find the yellow wire with the gray stripe, which is this middle one. All right, now we go ahead and tighten that down. It's getting a little cluttered in there, but that's okay. And that is all the wiring we needed to do. So we'll tighten this one down, as well as this one. Purple push off to the side. And we'll install our wire little cover so I don't lose or break it. And that is all to the wiring for the most part. Little touch-ups to do, but that's it. Here now is a good time as any to put on the uh, primer solenoid. It is going to get bolted on right down there. Got to install some screws kind of hold it for me for now. We'll have to come back out later but better than it flopping around and stuff. And it can kind of balance there. It'll kind of give you an idea where it's going. Now we got a fuel line right here going down to the carburetor. See it right here? So it looks like it'll come straight back. Like so. Let's pop this thing off again. So it'll come straight back to here. So let's cut this line. Cut the fuel line about there. The reason you're doing this is because you need a way to fuel the primer solenoid. So we're going to use one of our fuel line T's. Like so. It's a little too long. That's probably better. Alright, fuel line is on. Now this one is coming off the fuel pump. It is also a little too long. So, I'll trim about that much off. And 
and connect it. So now the fuel pump obviously is going to pump fuel. It'll go through the tube, through the carburetor, and then this side will go to our uh, primer solenoid. Let's get some more fuel line. And we will connect that up later. All right, let's talk about the bypass cover, which is under the fuel pump, and the little uh, intake manifold barb coming off right here. Usually what you would have on a 30 horse is a line coming from here, fuel line coming from here, through all this stuff, and under a fitting back here on the uh, bypass cover. Um, I don't have the fitting on there because this engine had a dewatering valve on it, and this just went to the dewatering valve and was capped off. I may not need this at all. I may just want to cap it off in the future, but for now I, I'm going to hook it up and see what I can do. I can't get a fitting for the bypass cover. I can buy a new bypass cover that already has a fitting in it. The problem is I have a 532nd spark fitting on here and not the standard 8th inch little or 16th inch little line. So what I bought was a little adapter to go from the 516s down to the 8th inch, I believe it is, size. So in theory, I could get a new bypass cover and then correctly connect that line. However, on a 20 horsepower motor, it doesn't have the bypass cover. What it has is a T going from the top of the carb here to the intake manifold and then over to the primer solenoid. So if that worked for a 20 horse, it should work for a 30. But I may not need it at all, so I'm going to try that. I'm going to tee this, this and the primer solenoid all together. I hope that kind of makes sense. All right, let's connect this little, it's a 1 16th by the way. Let's connect this line down to my little reducing fitting I got. Now, you, unless you have one of these military motors and are trying to do the same thing, you don't really need to ever worry about this. This is silly little custom job I have to do. Alright, so that's connected. You don't really need to close clamp it off. I'll put some zip ties on there later probably, but for now this will work fine. Let's use this. Position it back to where it goes. Determine where I'm going to cut this. Looks about there would probably do fine. Maybe a little shorter. And that is going to connect to the big fitting on our primer solenoid. Just like so. Alright, I replaced the primer solenoid with the one that I originally had in this video because the original one didn't work. The problem was it had the wrong fitting on it, so I put on a new fitting. The wire's a little shorter now, but should still reach. Looks good so far. Alright, I have my little custom tee made up. It'll get installed about there. Now I need to connect the fuel line, or the primer line, to the other side of the carburetor over here. A little fitting on top. If you have a plastic body carburetor up top, which you probably will, most of them do, well, the 30 horsepower is anyway, you'll, you should have a little fitting right here on the side. And this will connect right there. Now 
Now see this little cap? You gotta remember the primer solenoid is used on all kinds of motors with you know two and three carburetors. So it has a cap which would feed two lines for two carburetors or go to a T if you have four carburetors. Yeah, they, they can go all over the place, but that's why that little cap is there. Well, might as well do the shift handle now. We have some little square nuts that go behind. So take those off. And if you look, we have a little metal bracket inside of there. Now, this one was pretty faded and broken. It's kind of funny because these things are like 14 bucks new from uh, Evanard. They're, they're really pretty cheap if you think about it. And I cheaped out on this thing, but nowhere else on the motor. I don't know, it's kind of funny. You know, so it's pretty straightforward. Two screws, and then you screw them in behind here. Well, there's one up top in the back. A little harder to get to. Not much room inside of there. Now the gears here are aligned, so I can shift it in forward, but not reverse. Without the shift detent there, I don't want to say it's loose, but it's pretty loose. But that's, that's perfectly fine. Well, let's go ahead and install the shift cable bracket. Shift cable bracket will also hold on our primer solenoid for us, so it's kind of needed. Now some advice here. If you're going to move this engine around, via the back of a truck or anything, don't lay it on this side. You don't want to break this little thing. That will ruin your day. Now the bolts run through the cowling, obviously through the bracket, and into the bracket of our solenoid here. So they kind of hold each other together. If you aren't doing a remote electric start, I believe your carburetor float bowl is going to have a a little bracket to hold this on for you. I should have an example of that somewhere. I'll try to find it later. But for now, I'm trying to get the little lock nuts on the screw. Alright, now let's get a wrench and tighten it down. Looks like a 7 16 on the back. Make sure the fuel line and or wiring is going to be pinched as you go. Now again, very fragile. Don't lay it on that side. If you notice this little hairline crack right there, that's because I broke it already. I JB welded it back together. Seems fine. Let's hope it lasts. Now that was the shift. Now we need to install the throttle. Throttle bracket looks like so. Alright, this will get installed in the bottom right there. We already have some holes coming through on our cowling. So that's pretty handy. We'll put one in. A little tight with the starter there. Maybe I should have done that first. So I will use the top here. Spin the screw while I install this. It has these little slots that'll fall right onto. And my screw's not really going. So what's going on there? I don't know. They are very, very short screws, but if I don't use the socket to get it on, I use my hand because the socket doesn't really push the screw down. So I Use my hand to get it started. Now I'll come back with the socket, tighten it down. And there they are. Let me see if I can focus. There you go. Right, they are good and snug. Now some advice, if you need to move this engine, you need to lay it down, don't lay it down on this side because you're going to bend this up. So, fair warning, don't want to break that, it'll ruin your day.
Alright, time for some final touch-ups before we install the uh, flywheel. This shouldn't be hanging out like that. We should have a cable clamp there. Now originally there was one. However, it was a little broken, so it didn't go back on. So I went and robbed this off one of the junk piles out back. And install that. Keep our plugs in order. Alright, that's torqued down to the proper specs. Always important. We have a little connector clip here that is supposed to help hold the connectors in place. It does, but most of the time people just lose them. And it really doesn't make a difference. So I will bend this back and down. And maybe put my wires in it. Like so. Yeah, looks like a good place for them to me. Now, I also feel there should be one right here. I already cracked this screw loose to make sure it wasn't going to give me any issues. So I'll put a little one right there. I don't know if I mentioned it previously, but I rerouted the cable a little bit just to tidy things up a bit. Um, added the clamp over here, so we're good there. So now I got to install the battery cable, or at least start to. I'm going to tighten the bottom nut here. Obviously I'm missing the top, so I'm going to go get one of those now. Okay, with that top bolt also comes the battery cable. Let's go ahead and get the positive. Let me wash it up first. This thing's pretty, pretty ugly. All right, I got the red and the black battery cables. Wipe it down. I'll run them in through that hole in the front. Positive. I'm gonna try to cram in here. Yeah, that'll work nicely. Put that one there. And might as well do the negative while I'm here. So, that looks a little big, like a lot big. I'm going to get some washers. Yeah, I don't know. I'll probably rethink my battery cable options here. Just get some with the proper fittings on it. But I figure two washers will work. I mean, how could they not, right? All right. Get my little wrench here. These things are sometimes, pretty much always actually, a little, a little hard to get to. So you only really want to do this once. All right, that was tight. Ish. Come with the wrench. A little snugger. Now these being factory cables have this fancy little boot on them. If you don't have one, just make sure nothing's going to rub it. That's all you really got to do. Just make sure we still have smooth operation. Which we do. Alright, in an attempt to make these battery cables orderly and pretty, I installed some of the split loom stuff on here. I don't know, it, it might work. I'm probably going to have to take it off because I'm probably going to need longer cables on the boat that's going on. But I'll leave it on for now. Uh, the only thing left here is the cable clamp that goes right here. I'm going to find that and install it. Now this is made to hold down the, uh, the uh, controller harness as well. But I don't have that just yet, so I'm not going to worry about it. And it appears might have a little bit of a hardware snafu down here. So I will go clean that out. Alright, cable clamp is installed. Screw uh, hardware was chased and went right in. Uh, battery cables are in. I added the little um, connector clip here for the main red harness, so that's in its spot. It's pretty much all done. The only thing I need to do is put on the flywheel and torque it down and see if we get some spark out of it. So let's do that. All 
All right, flywheel nut torque is 100 to 105 foot-pounds. To do this, I will be using a torque-limiting impact uh, extension. we will limit the torque down to 100 pounds. Going the right way. And that's all there is to it. Okay, battery cables are hooked up. There are no issues so far. Don't expect any. Well, I've never checked the ignition system, so I don't know if it's going to work, but I think it will. Let's see if our uh, solenoid works and or our starter. And nothing. Let's do some checking. There's 12 volts there. Nothing here. Let's button. All right, we have 12 volts coming out of the solenoid. But the starter ain't turning. You guys want to see the weirdest thing I've ever seen? I think we need a starter. All right, I've taken the starter apart, cleaned the uh, brushes, contacts, and pretty much anything else I could come across. I then hooked it up to this battery here and bench tested it over and over and over again until I was sure it was working. Seems okay. Where did I get the starter, you ask? Um, I had a little six horsepower, which I've shown in other videos. I was bored with it and I traded it for a kind of a junky 20 horse but that junky 20 horse came with all kinds of new parts this starter was one of them it says 2016 1027 so chances are this starter is you know four years old I don't know uh, its history at all because I just got it from some dude and it was a good new starter figured I'd hang on to it and here we are so maybe it was bad and they got another one and that's why this one was never installed I don't know but let's see what happens now Hey! Alright, let's check for spark now. Let's make sure we have ignition. It looks like we got some sparkage down there. Let's check up here. Still have sparkage. So that's good. Now, there's a couple of things to remember here. I didn't screw with this little, uh, well, screw right here. Nor did I mess with the timing up front. Everything is still kind of back to where it was. The only thing that may not be the same is the, the uh, throttle stop here and here. Those, those might need some fine tuning, but the, the rest of the ignition timing, we should be fine. Last thing to do here is install some spark plugs. That would be a, a QL77JC4. An alternative would just be a, I think it's a Q77JC4. Actually, there's a bunch of alternatives, but either way, that's what I'm putting in. These are gapped at 0 .030. So no problems there. I have run the overboard indicator hose down and through the grommet. If you, you probably want to make sure that's in, because if not, <laughs> the gallon kind of fills with water and it's kind of embarrassing. So I will tighten these down. I didn't actually wind up reusing the uh, pull starter. I, I just I don't think I need it. However, given the history of this starter, and how it's performed so far, having a backup starting system isn't necessarily a bad idea. I think most people going to do this conversion aren't going to want to spend the money on finding another hood for their motor. So I think the pull starter is a good idea to reinstall. I have a halfway decent looking cowling here that I will be using. Granted, it's not the nicest or the best, but it'll work. And it's only a 20. Yeah, I think it looks, I think it looks fine. Okay, let's get this thing some water and we'll fire it up.
most part, engine, it's fine. Um, the fuel pump wasn't really doing anything. I, uh, I can either rebuild it, which I'll probably do, but I also have a new bypass cover, or a new used bypass cover off of a, uh, another 30 horse, and I also have a new intake manifold, so I'm thinking about swapping the whole thing out. That way I have the proper hose fitting on the intake there, or at least the hose from intake manifold to bypass cover will be correct. And I also have a, uh, a another 30 horsepower carburetor for it. This one is fine, don't get me wrong. The thing is, it's not it's not really period correct. It looks like this is, you know, like a uh, 80s carburetor, but kind of a little more modern. It doesn't have the plastic fitting on the top. I think this being a military motor, it didn't want any plastic fittings on top that may break or leak, so I think that's why they use kind of the older design and why it looks like that. That's also why I skipped the carburetor repair video for this motor, is because nobody with a 90s motor is going to have a carburetor that looks like this, at least very few. Now, like I said, it is running fine. It's a little difficult to start. Um, one of the reasons is my cable here is just a joke. So I need to replace the cables on this little uh, test controller I have. And I need to sit here and spend some time fine-tuning the idle stop screw there. That way I don't idle it down too far and, you know, it kills it. So some fuel system repair and or a new carburetor intake manifold and some fine-tuning of the idle stop. And I think this would be a good running motor. The thing I should mention, I put the uh, battery cables in first. That is not how you do it. You should install the uh, controller cable first, you know, the big red plug. Fit it through there and then use the battery cable to fish in. I did it backwards, which is why the cable is hanging out you know, off the side here, because you can't fit the red plug through that hole with the battery cables on. Kind of silly. But that's it for now. Hope you enjoyed it. Questions, comments, concerns, let me know. See y'all later.